Okay, so question come in and it was kind of based on like um, a fear about going into work and, and not having that become like a very difficult experience for her or overdoing it or um, becoming detrimental or harmful or just not being able to do it basically. And when you're an empath, you know, sometimes people have that tendency to do things that they don't normally feel like they would like to do or they could feel badly or they could just um, get themselves put into positions that kind of suck and drain their energy. I had wanted to think about it before I came back with my response about it because it's something that it's, it's hard to just be like blah, 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 blah. But in this group specifically, even um, recently, there was a post shared where, where you clearly see the narcissistic abuse within it and saw how it impacted her and being somebody that's been through it and knows the results of it and how detrimental it is regardless of your awareness of it or not it's even worse when you don't know fully or you're not fully 100 percent believing it or maybe you don't want to believe it because you still have that empathy inside of you that's like i don't want to believe in, in the fact that somebody may be this harmful so it's hard you know and it's hard anyways it's hard anyways to go to work and, and maintain professionalism and getting all the work done and doing all the things within this world if you're not um, somebody that has you know cut yourself off from deeply feeling emotions and you also get impacted by the energies of the collective and also are somebody that's very sensitive and have a heightened awareness but also a heightened ability to manifest which we all do but I think a lot of people shut themselves down or just get like sucked into this creation around us those of us who have like seen the glitches in the matrix or have seen the manifestations very quickly within our lives could probably tell that like, hey, there's there's something here. There's something around us. There's a thing that impacts us. And it's very, very much important how we go into it, what we're doing, where we are, who we are dealing with, how we are feeling. And all of that combined adds into the existence that we're going to be living within. So if you have somebody in your life that you care about deeply or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter who they are, how they are, what they do, you still care about them on that level. Unfortunately, sometimes those people don't have that same compassion, empathy, or love, and they could show up at any time and do something to you that takes you into their creation or their existence or the manifestation of things that become confusing and overwhelming and detrimental to you, to your overall being and to how you show up in your productivity and all of the things that you have to do in your life. So I know when, when you were doing Fiverr, you were doing great. You were doing awesome. Um, you've worked for me before and you've done amazing things and everybody who saw whatever you've done was always like, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. Like there's always been great feedback. Like we know that you can do it. We know that you are great at it. We know that you have a gift to write and have a gift to be able to do that work. And you could be successful and, and professional and show up and get it done. You also have a very strong ability to create. You are a manifester. You're somebody that does it very, very fast. And today's post that you put in is an example, a prime example of it in the works. It's like the only thing that's missing from you within what you have happening is that confidence or the belief in yourself enough to recognize it and call it out for what it is and see exactly what you do to yourself because you're like, I feel like this, and then this happens, and I think that, and then that happens, and that's exactly what you're doing. So when you were doing good with you with your fiver and all of that, everything was great until What's-His-Face came around and started his fucking toxic bullshit, and you ended up deleting it, and you ended up, you know, just like, like, de basically, you allow the influence of impact of other people's opinion or actions to greatly impact how you feel about yourself and then you basically fall into that place of like self-sabotage which we all do I've done it I still do it I'm at a very very low point right now coming back from where I had been and I've seen myself rise very high and I've seen myself fall very low and it's dependent upon how we feel who is around us how we feel in regards to our creation and the energy and the support and the people around us and like how much value we place on ourselves and how much value other people place on us will come about from that. 
I feel like if you want to have a job where you go and you do work, you can do it. There's no, there's no ifs, ands, or abouts about it. You can do it. Also, just having that awareness of like, I don't want to go in there and then have it take over or become drained by it or be like, you know, like bamboozled or taken over by or um, what a lot of us do who are empaths or people who have had suffering and struggles and um, self-confidence issues or people tear us down and make us feel like shit. A lot of times we get our recognition or we get like our boost of confidence. We feel better about ourselves through the work that we do. So we become workaholics and when something there goes off kilter, it's like it's even more draining and detrimental. Like... It's, it sucks to have emotional upheaval or bad things experienced, right? I've always been able to handle it a hell of a lot better, but when you get my work involved in it, it hits on a much deeper level. But knowing these things and learning about these things and figuring these things out and going through it and all of that, it's like, it, it's just a creation. It's just a manifestation. It's just how we are. It's just what we think, what we do, and what we feel. So if you set the intention before you even show up, to do the work and you create healthy boundaries on day one and then those boundaries get crossed you have the choice in that moment to let them be crossed or you have the choice to say no I've already told you that I can't do this on that day or I can't you know let this take over my life like just be open and up front from the get-go of what expectations are being put on you and if they start to go over them hold firm and don't let that happen people do respect people when they let them like when you let it be known when you don't let other people do what they do or try to do what they do or let like that little tiny inch become a mile and then the bigger test is going to be are you going to be able to maintain show up and not let dickhead come around and do what he does and if he does, are you going to let it impact you to the point where it then derails other stuff? You're aware of it. You know it. You see it. Other people see it. it, it it's, it's, it's black and white when we look at it. It's very easy to see. You know. And um, I have another person in my life right now that is being impacted by somebody that I knew personally who was a very narcissistic, abusive, toxic person. And just their appearance back in that person's life was a, I was like a well aware that that person's back in their life without it ever being vocalized to me. I could just tell. I just knew. It was just like, okay, that person's back around because of the way that one was acting. So <clears throat> having that awareness, you have like, okay, like I'm aware of this. I know this. We know what the MO is or we know what like the, the things are. So when he shows up and he starts reaching out or whatever, first of all, the only way he's going to be able to get to you is if you allow that. If you give that, that doorway or that opening or that unblock, right? So if he's blocked somewhere, he could create a fake account or whatever. But it's pretty clear we're going to know pretty quickly if it's him reaching out. And if it's him reaching out, we're going to know pretty quickly that he's coming with some bullshit. He's coming in with some, some bored fucking crazy person, asshole isms that he wants to be you know spreading around and it could even be that he gets triggered to do so by seeing your successfulness so you're seeing you're doing good it's like that's what they fucking do like the one that i had years ago that came back gung-ho and meeting themselves in places thinking that i was gonna be there and shit like based out of conversations that they're having with themselves in the inbox and the person that they're with con cu like currently was messaging me asked me if i know where they are the fact that that would even happen, right? This person's got a girlfriend and kids and all of that stuff, and that person's asking me if I know where their person is, so they're clearly being open with the fact that they're being a fucking toxic piece of shit asshole to the person that they lived with currently. But that person was in the, the sickness or in it, like within the fucking, oh, I'm crazy and I want, you, I want, it's weird. There's a thing with narcissists, like when they come in and they take over, it's like, even, even if the people know, like I have a friend who's, who's, in a relationship with somebody like that and they've been in it for a very long time and I had talked to them one day just me and the girl um who had previously not liked me because thought that like whatever they thought because because narcissists do what narcissists do and they try to like fucking sleep with other people and they cheat and they lie and they're they're just toxic but that person didn't like me until one day when I had had been alone with that person to talk to them and be like yeah well I understand it's like you you want to be number one even if you're even if you know that there's other people even if you know whatever like they're cheating and they're doing this and they're doing that and da, ba, 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 ba. there's almost like a level of like basic instincts or um 
animalistic type of shit that, that takes over in the mind and it's like well I want to be the number one like I'm I live with him even though he's sleeping with you and you and you and you live there and you live there and he's giving you that and he's giving you that it's like you don't even have anything good coming from them at all it's like you just live there but it's like you're number one or something in the book and it's it's a very toxic situation and if people haven't lived in it or they don't know it then they won't get it but if you've been in it you know about it you get it then you realize it and you're like yeah it's pretty fucking sick and toxic it's gonna mess with your entire life and your ability to love yourself and your ability to gain love from others your ability to be successful to have abundance to go far in life you got to get rid of these people and you got to stop trying to be number one in someone else's book who's never going to give you that. They're never going to give you that. Even if you are like their girlfriend, their main girlfriend or their main whatever, you live with them or they, they're, they're pouring out their fucking toxic love bomb shit onto you currently. It's going to go away or it's going to be taken back and, and forth and back and forth to the level where you just are so beaten down and making dumb decisions and believing bullshit believing the worst type of things just the, the the gaslighting that comes about it's like you know better you fucking know you you need to make yourself a list of like all the things and keep like a running track like when you have a track that's why I used to journal and and still keep like a daily like thing of like the dates and the times and all that stuff because they will mind fuck you to the point where you're like lost within this chaos and you're not able to function properly you're basically like questioning your own reality like like the times that I would see pictures or have very clear evidence that like this was not a doing of anybody other than you it was impossible that anybody else would ever have been doing it or very 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 extremely like wow wow like it would have to be like other world fucking matrix glitzy like craziness for it to be playing out in any other way than what you believe or see or know yet they will make you doubt yourself and, and question yourself to that level so do you think that's a great place to be or an easy thing to maintain while working or doing anything else of any of any level of human and getting good and be good and doing okay in your own life no it's going to derail everything so if you want to work you need to maintain the beliefs in yourself you need to maintain like a healthy regimen of what you're doing and what you're not doing who you're dealing with and who you're not dealing with I know it's not easy out here and like having a support system would be helpful but sometimes we don't have that to the degree that we would probably be the best off with but that's also a part of this world that we're living in right now where it's like, you know, COVID came about. It just fucking made everybody be like, oh, I'm separated and I'm alone and I'm miserable. Nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. I'm going to be alone. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be like this fucking horrible existence. Bah, bah, bah. And, it, and it's also being pushed into us on chemical levels and energetic levels and frequency levels. There's so many things that are going on on a regular basis that we need to fight back with and combat with our mind. Our mind is, is the creator, it's the manifester. So when you're like, I feel like I might have kidney stones and oh my God, when I think about it, oh, I have the pain, right? But then I forget about it and then it goes away. So right there we know that that's a manifestation of your creation. You're thinking about it, you're bringing it on, you will create it if you think about it too much. That's what my mom would do. That's what I do, that's what we all do. We all do it, but, but we, some of us get it and we do it real real well real quick and some of us do it real slow and it's almost like we're much better at the fucking horrible much better at what we're known to do what we're, we're, we're like oh yeah this is familiar being in this shit show horrible existence is familiar so let me keep creating that and it's not easy to break up out of it but you can do it and i've seen you do it and you've seen you do it and there's no reason to think that you can't do it or maintain it or reason to believe that like if you do go into something that it has to end up being like horrible you are the one that's creating it so be actively creating it rather than like just observing it same same stuff like there was different things that you like like um is this bad for me or is that bad for me anything that you believe is going to be bad for you is going to be bad for you anything you believe is good for you is going to be good for you it's how you believe you know but but what also have to keep in the the realization like you cannot make another person be something because you they have their own creation their own free will so you can be like deciding on oh like 
how you feel and how you are and where you go and what you use and what you eat and what you do and all of that. But when you try to like mix in with other people, you need to maintain you and, and keep up very healthy like strength and not allow them to be bamboozle you and not try to manipulate the, re the relationship or the creation of the, the thing that's happening between like, yeah, you can have things be good for you or bad for you, but you cannot make someone else be good for you. You cannot make someone else be better if they're just going to be who they are. I know people want to be able to do that really badly sometimes, or they really want for someone to be like different than they are or to just, just do whatever, but they're never going to, they're never going to do anything other than what they decide to do for them own selves and their own existence and their own empathy and their own care. And sometimes people need to go through great suffering and great pain and great upheaval to even ever care or be aware on the level that some of us are. Some of us have experienced a lot of shit and it helps us to see things in a different way and to care on a deeper level and to give many, many chances to people that we probably shouldn't and to let things slide a little too long. And you know what? It's just, it's just a reflection of the fact that you're a good person. You have a big heart and you care deeply, but that means that you deserve that back. You don't deserve to be treated like a piece of shit. You don't deserve to be taken advantage of, and you don't deserve to feel inadequate or incapable of doing the things that we all know that you're really good at doing. But it, it's up to you. You need to decide what you want to do, how you're going to do it, and then show up and do it and not not give your power away and even if you go in and you do it and something bad happens as a result of it or you fig figure out halfway in you can't do it for some reason it's not working out it doesn't that that's okay then it doesn't work out we don't need to go into it thinking all of that be beforehand because that's going to probably create that happening but if we go into it knowing that I'm going to give it my all and, and even if it doesn't work out it's not the end of the fucking world what's the worst thing that can happen People get themselves all worked up about these things that, that they like, oh no, what about, but about, and we make it like this life or death or this big fucking like thing that, that doesn't need to be, and that causes chaos within itself or the like power of it to become so, so horrible or so big within us because we give it so much power, so much energy, so much fear, so much doubt that it's like, oh yeah, that big thing, it's not a big thing. If somebody wants you to work for them, they want you to work for them. And if like, you know, six months into it, two months into it, two weeks into it, you, you don't work out, you won't be the first person in the world for that to happen to. And, and, and like when people have like these things come at them with like money or bills or, or things, and it's like, ah, and they let it like become like, I'm so scared. What is, like, if you don't have something, you don't have it. If you can't do something, you can't do it. It's like, it's that's it. It's black and fucking white, man. That's it. You just can't do it or you can do it. We're not going to know until we get there. And and people can either fucking deal with it or not deal with it. But there, there's like not, not going to be huge repercussions on your life and your existence. Like you're not going to stop living. You're going to still be alive the next day, even if you fucking fail that job or, you know, get late on some payment or have a bad week or, you know, get a kidney stone or whatever. It's like you're still going to be alive. You're still going to be fine. Even if you do die, you'll still be here because energy just transforms. It doesn't, it doesn't die. People have to stop being afraid to live. People need to stop being afraid to die. People need to stop being afraid of every fucking thing that's out there. And that's how it's conditioned and, and like put into this reality around us through certain things and frequencies and people out there that want others to be down and out and bad and sad and not not thriving because it makes it easier for others to thrive it makes it easier for others to remain in their power it makes it easier for the darkness and the the, the suffering and the struggling to continue on when all of us are out here afraid to speak our truth afraid to be who we are afraid to show up for ourselves when we self-sabotage or we feel like we're just like some fucking like like false person or we're not good enough or whatever it's like it's all by design and it's all been fed and bred into us for so long and it's like it's it's killing people and it's like destroying the world as a whole so we need to take our power back and stand in our power stand in our strength and stop letting it happen like the what's the worst that, like start asking yourself what is the worst that could happen what is the worst thing that could happen maybe i die well oh well like 
I, I, that probably would mean that I was supposed to go at that time because everything else seems to be pretty much aligned in that way of like meant to be. We always look at things back after the things are over and like, wow, that was actually a good thing or ah, that actually ended up being like a ba ba or I overcame that or I overcame that and I now here I am and that was a good time and that was, look how well I did. Boo, 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 boo. We just live and we learn and we grow and we evolve. And, and like I said, energy does not get destroyed. It just transforms. So even if you leave your physical body, which you, you know, probably have have something happen around that that's not going to be exi like, oh, that was fun, right? So it's like, instead of being like, ah, just know that like, if it's time to go, it's time to go. Maybe you'll be enjoying the next one a little bit more or the next thing will be easier. But, but stop being afraid. If we could just take back the power within ourselves and believe within ourselves and know within ourselves what we need to do and be aware of it every day remind ourselves every day like do something every fucking day that you know is going to be the thing that you need to do for you like i'm going to get up i'm going to cut my cords i'm going to be aware of my energy i'm going to set my intention i'm going to write my affirmations i'm going to be grateful for what i have because i know that's a magical little thing that's going to bring more for me to be grateful about and then i'm going to like do like a thing like a visualization of how that day is going to play out you know like imagine yourself being successful seeing the things play out in a good way maintaining your composure maintaining your ability to say no or to be with boundaries and to eliminate things or the people or the suffering or the struggling that usually comes about when we don't be aware of that or we let these things seep in through the cracks and the holes and the doubts and the fears and all of that and then keep doing that every day and I know it's easy to fall down and it's easy to get sucked under and it's easy to get afraid and it's easy to give everything over to the, the powers outside of us or for us to want someone else to give us the yes or the no or the confirmation or the pat on the back. But we're not always going to get that. And we're not always going to be able to find that out there. And, and even when we do, sometimes it does not fucking matter. Because I've begged you and I've cried and I've, I've given you the confirmations. And I've told you black and white as till it was blue in the face. Until times where I was like, listen, I don't know what else to tell you, man. Because I could see you were in what you were in and dealing with what you were dealing and until you fi figured that out and got through it and stopped doing it you were going to be there and there was nothing I could do about it even when I was begging you it was like it was I was wasting my time my energy and my efforts and it's the same thing like when someone's an addict or they're like you know doing things that are really bad for them and we love them and we want them to stop and we want them to be better and we want them to see from our perspective or to whatever they're not gonna until they do and we could talk until we're blue in the face. They're never going to get there until they're ready to get there. And sometimes they may never get there. Sometimes they they may die in, in the fight against the thing that we were trying to prevent them from being within in the first place. Or the thing that we were trying to get them to stare away from. Or the thing that, you know, comes about from the fear of them getting within it. Like my mother had done things like that to me in my life where she was like, bah, 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 and then here it is. Wow, that's weird. It's like we create our reality. Everything you think, everything you speak, everything you say, everything you write or put into creation manifests. It does. It really fucking does. And I've seen it. And I'm like, oh. And, and I've tried to be like very careful with it after seeing just how innately and easily and quickly it happens. But use it for good. It's the reality that we're in is weird. Like there's like these, these glitches and things that happen, right? We see beyond this this mundane we see how quickly it happens we see we see that there's an energetic realm that we don't we don't perceive with our eyes we already know that that like our human eyes only pick up like a very small bit of what is out here and i think that's probably good and it's probably because like we don't really want to be seeing all that's out here but knowing that it's out here is half the battle and realizing that like we are we are light. We are we are the ones that are, are of the light. We are the ones that are here to overcome, to be good, to, to, to choose. Like you can go down the path of, of destruction and pain and misery and all of that. And that's usually because you're under the under the like effects or the impacts of the dark of the evil that's in the world but you are the light and you are stronger than any dark you are stronger than any evil or any demon or anything that's out there but you have to believe in that you need to know that you need to see that and and be it every time i do anything anytime i talk to anybody see anything look at whatever think a fucking thought like it's insane how quickly it manifests back to me or more of it to confirm it or when I look into more of it it's like it just it's like I'm following a little trail of information that's like confirming the things that I'm thinking or feeling 
no matter how I do it, it doesn't even matter. It's like, do I want to go down this path or that path? So knowing that is like, all right, well, let's start creating the fucking path that doesn't lead to destruction or, or hate or pain or suffering. But again, we got to be mindful that there's other people out there creating their paths. And if they want to be the type that creates a path of destruction and pain, we need to make sure we stay off of theirs or out of their way or off of the frequency that they're within and not let them take us down with them. Maintaining yourself, loving yourself, protecting yourself. I feel like we, we just, we're here repeating the same things over and over. It's weird. Um, unless you see it, you probably won't understand it fully, but I've seen it and like, it's like people who, you know, it's like, oh, I've reincarnated or I feel like I was this or that or whatever in another life. There's so many people that feel that way and they feel that way with certain people, you know, like, like, like more people will come around and be like, oh, I feel like I'm Jesus. I was Jesus. Right. I don't think that's what it is. I think what it is, is that that energy, that imprint, that frequency of these beings or these souls or this essence of what they hold or the, the lessons that they carried, it manifests into us through our DNA, it comes down through the ancestral lines and through the patterns and the, the traumas and the existence that we've lived, like people who were in the Holocaust, that their great, great, great granddaughter, you know, will have the same type of PTSD symptoms as the, the person that was literally there. Same thing with people from like 9-11, those, those people, their kids and their kids' kids. It happens. It's there. It's in the DNA. It's in the cells. It's in the atoms. It's in the words. It's in the frequency. It's in the planets. Even the planets themselves. When you go way back to the beginning of time and throughout our history and you look at all these different people and all these different religions and all these different places and the beliefs that tie into it, you see it's all connected and it's all the same fucking story being told over and over and over again. You know, like the epic of Gilgamesh is basically the same story as like over here. Then we have like Canaan and Abel. Uh, Cain and Abel fought, right? That's like, oh, Set and Osiris. When, when that happened, the brothers killing each other. We have somebody resurrecting out of the thing. You know, it's, it's the same story over and over and over and over. And people tell the stories, but it's like, there's obviously something to it, right? There's some story there, main overall arching thing. And it's like we're trying to fucking overcome that and, and break out of that existence, that experience, that suffering, that struggle. The other day I told somebody about how people have in the past, mediums, and again, Roger, I don't know church, never been to church, I don't know anything about any of that stuff, right? I'm brand new to all this stuff. When I came out into this world of spirituality and all of that, I was here as a star seed. That was my main thing. That's what woke me up. That's what I was like, okay. And they wouldn't stop with the, the sinks and they still do it. Anytime I see those May and November dates on stuff, it's like a confirmation for me that this is something I'm meant to see or know about because there's a lot of shit that fucking happens during that time that like I end up seeing that's like tied to weird ass shit in our history and even just now. And um, like Sarah Magdalene was brought to my attention by multiple mediums and we're like, oh, you were Sarah Magdalene, who is apparently the daughter of Jesus. When I first looked her up, um, she was holding a flame and she reminded me of St. Bridget. And the only reason I knew anything about her was there was a church right down the street from where I lived, like literally two feet away. I was a little girl, the first home that like, that I was in, it was on, we lived on a crossroads, and right down the street was uh, St. Bridget's Church, and my mom always drove by there and said, there's your church, so later when I woke up, and probably like a few years into it, was when I finally looked into her, and all the synchronicities that was there, it was like, oh my god, but it, like, I didn't find out about her until after I was already like living a lot of the stuff, like the poetry, um, the bee stuff, like the honey stuff. My mom always called me bee. I had tons of bee gifts from her. And then um, wherever she walked, clovers would grow. And it was like a weird thing because of all the four-leaf clovers that I just find easily that was passed down to me from my ancestor, my grandmother. And and I felt like the Sarah and, and Bridget were the same because like Bridget's a keeper of the flame and Sarah Magdalene was holding a flame in like the one picture that I could find of her or the one thing that was talking about her at all. So the other day, I popped both their names into Google just to see, just to see if there's anything out there about them together. Like, like is this, like, there's some, some tie to them? Which is what I used to do back in the beginning when I was trying to figure out shit because 
I would just have random thoughts and craziness that would always lead me back to the Pleiades or lead me back to the Seven Sisters or Sirius or Babadoo, Badipade, the Pleiadian, this and that and all the things and all the histories and all the shit like the Subaru fucking symbols and the freaking stuff that's like all over the world. It's like, why is that everywhere? And yet still not really spoken about too much to the degree that it should be. And then down to like the fucking four portal things that we have everywhere, the symbols that are on all our money and all of that stuff. But it ended up bringing me to an article about women that were poor and women that were treated poorly. And like back when they were in the old days, if you got pregnant, they'd send you away to go have your baby. And like there was a place where it happened, like 600 babies were in the the sewer of that place. So then a lot of the women from from Ireland and, and those places where they were poor or whatever, the connected, they called them Bridget's. They called those women Bridget. Like... The, oh, she's a Bridget. Oh, she's a Bridget. She's a Bridget. Because they were fucking... I don't know. I don't even know, man. But, like, it was weird. I actually have a thing I recorded with it. Because I read it. And in it, it was talking about, like, that connection of, like... And in it, it said, like, talking, speaking, writing about our experiences is healing. Very fucking powerful thing to do. To heal, to get it out, to talk about it, to have perspective shift. To see things in a new way or to connect in a new way or to understand in a new way and also talked about the fact that we are all basically carrying the dna of these people that came before us the suffering and the struggling and like the, the the hardships and all of that that's like just innately within us whether you're a man or a woman or whatever or wherever you've been or whoever you've been or whoever came before you you're holding all of it within you on some level or some degree and so then the other night I'm talking to somebody and I was like explaining and talking about it. I don't even know why it came up, but it was just like one of those things that came up and she was like, oh, oh, Sarah, like she knew her because it's not common people know who she is. And she's in the, the divine feminine deck, right? But she's in there as like the queen of the outsiders. And she was all about whatever. And her date that was in the thing was fucking May 24th, which is right around Palladian lineup. And it had just been after I'm telling her, uh, the girl I was talking to, it was like, yeah, like the Beppa dad, the those dates always confirmed for me. And she gets the book out and reads it to me. And she's like, May 24th, oh my God. Because it was like the day that they commemorate and like they celebrate her in another country because she would do things for people and openly like accepted people lovingly whether they were from where they were or from like coming across the seas or whatever she just knew when when things were okay or things were good people or we should be nice to these people and then right i was like i have that deck so i looked up that you know i looked at and i found it and then the deck that i was using the other night that has like this like the star stream oracle has all these like weird synchronicities and confirmations and jesus looking thing and uh, mary looking stuff and all of that she was fucking in there too and i was like oh my god and it's like these little signs these little synchronicities these little confirmations are out there for us for us to find and and, and follow so hers is the the heroine's journey um, begin a quest on the hero heroine's journey. Whether you are moving the physical body or just your mind, you will um, accumulate knowledge for yourself and others, and this can shift the current paradigm. Says Sarah stands on the shore of Avalon, wearing the seed of life. <laughs> She is, Seed of Life is the first thing I used for one of my logos, like the very first logo that I ever created, just a Seed of Life. Um, she st stands there. And she is bringing her experience from another realm to act as a catalyst in the development of the Celtic people. She plants her seed of life in a new domain. And in past times, Glatzenberry was accessible from the sea and had constant interjections of different cultures and their philosophies. Along with Cornwall, it was a trading route exchanging lead and tin and gold for other precious items such as wine and exotic fabrics and fragrances and amber and spices and ideas. Joseph and... Um, Amarinthia and Sarah, the daughter of Jesus and Mary, would have sailed along this route. There was another card that came out too the other night, and I actually have the card held within the book here. For some reason, I was like, I held this, and it's here. And it says, um, The Return of Vlasta. And it says, Your beliefs define your character. Protect yourself with spiritual armor. Stand firmly on the ground and hold true to your commitments. The druid prophetess Libius foresaw the plague in mystical trance, and in the center was a pra, 
which is a connection to the other world. She may have represented the last of the Celtic matriarchal societies in Europe after her death in 735. The pre milizid line of the Czech kings began. Her daughters and the women refused the dominion of men, and with Vlasta as at their leader, the women started the Maiden's War, rebelling against the patriarchal takeover in one of the first documented accounts of and like I said, that thing that I read the other night, it was about women that were, like, pregnant, and they had, oh, you got pregnant, you're not married, ba 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 you're a bad fucking hoe bag, you're a bird, we're gonna send you off to, like, basically kill you or your baby, or, or both of you, or give them away, or do some weird fucking trafficking thing with them, and it's, it's not good, man, it's not good. This one says, in the beautiful Camarag, Camarag, Mary Magdalene is coming forward into the present time frame as the icon to represent the divine feminine and its all possibilities. She brings the scrolls of her wisdom teachings and the white horse symbolizes the old paradigms and belief systems of the patriarchal society retreating and fading into the mist as a new template of equal balance comes forward. And this is mirrored in the entwined flamingos that act, uh, symbolize the eros gamos in the DNA activation and the baby chicks in the child of the new dawn of war on women and it's um started when the maidens rebelled against that uh eventually they were overcome and the patriarchal rule began vlasta's ornaments breastplate and shield are authentic and can be found in the national museum in prague and in the background is satvoit the god the god of light in the ancient Slavs, in the laden leaves of the Czech nas national tree. And it says, take a stand. So it's like, we got to take a stand and become our power. And the other one that's in here for some reason is Magdalene. And it says, feminine wisdom and knowledge has been suppressed for too long. Even you must strike out on your own. And it will be worth it in the end. Be strong and let no one intimidate you or compromise your integrity. Integrity has been coming through a lot. And I just opened up to this by accident, but I think it's for a reason. And it says, be open to communication from unexpected places. And it says, the high priestess from the land of Ariane, listen carefully for the answers and the directions um, from the inner earth and the star beings. They may have an assignment for you or something to share. On February 19th, 1947, Admiral Byrd with his radio men flew into the North Pole and in his flight log he relates to the events in the visit of the inner earth while flying over the snow and ice. He was astonished to see rolling hills and rivers in a warm veteran landscape where he reports seeing a mammoth. Soon radiant dish ship crafts appear and take control of his plane flying it down into the interior and they landed near a shimmering city pulsating with rainbow hues. Uh, he observed the external temperature was 74 degrees it's funny because I've always been like 74 degrees would be like the ideal temperature for me. Um, and there was a t there was a central sun, a tall blonde man approached, welcoming them and informing Admiral Bird that he he was to have an audience with their master. He said, you are in the domain of the Ariani, the inner wor world of the earth. And the master told him of their concern about the recent use of nuclear weapons and gave Admiral Byrd a message for the surface world. And after delivering it to the Pentagon, he was ordered to keep silent. And he did not want the information to die with him. So he left his diaries behind for his um, posterity. And people have talked about this. Now, the other night when I did the readings on, on my Instagram, I literally told in the last one that I did, the last video, it was like, I think we need to connect with Argatha, Argatha, Argatha. That's where Argatha is, is in that inner world. And the power of the master says, when you vibrate at the frequency of love, no negative energies can touch you because their frequency will not resonate with yours. There is nothing stronger in the universe than the power of love. Sometimes we need to be reminded of this when our world becomes overwhelming and frightening. Turn off the news. Stop listening to the disinformation and align yourself with love and positive energy. Spend time appreciating the wonders of nature. Create something of beauty. Attune with a child or a pet or wild animal. All of these things will lift your spirit once again and, and to the level of the master. And they will help you when invoked and remind you of your own self-mastery. It is then that you can go forward assured, knowing evil cannot harm you. There is no empty space in the universe. Try thinking of this and see what manifests in your life. Sadness and loss are temporary conditions. We live in an abundant multiverse. The redwood frost forest is alive and on every level. And here it is a part 
playing with the, nur the nurturing of the woman and it's stirring her senses to life again. The beauty of the trees are encouraging her to leave the stifling emotions behind. And when we attune to the na nature of vital essence, we attract that vitality into life. In the painting, the eyes of the mushroom suggest consciousness in all things. These particular fungi, colorists of ves vesicolor, are used as a cancer treatment. We cannot be truly alone in the forest. The trillium, the plant in the left-hand corner of the painting, is unique in North America and yet was carved in the stones of the entrance of Rosslyn Chapel before Columbus visited America. So Arthur under the tour says, Arthur speaks of his subterranean kingdom under Glatzenberry Tor. What do his eyes convey to you about questions? Is it of a past life issue? On one is a place of everlasting life and abundance and in a sense of paradise located deep within the earth. In medieval times, Middle Welsh sources suggest that the term meant very deep and it was ruled by the Gwyn um, Apnud. Arthur traversed this landscape in many tales when he was able to enter and return. It is said that as an entrance to Glatzenberry Tor, and this land is also referred to the Celtic Otherworld, the stories bring to mind the accounts of Argatha, Telos, and other regions of the inner earth. It is said that many different types of beings dwell there, including small and giant life forms, alien to surface dwellers, tall, he tall humanoids and advanced technologies, evolved wisdom have been encountered and documented in many cases. These different species could account for the various myths heard and read from every culture on the planet so i feel like right now going into argatha energy connecting to that argatha energy is going to help people we are immortal spirits dwelling in third dimensional body templates and the imprint of everything we do remains with us and will affect our future incarnations think your actions through before you take them be mindful of the effects that they may have on others in the Bushi mountains of romania was the home of Zalmix, the supreme god of the De Decanians, and he made a sanctuary in a cave where it was said to he would disappear for the years at a time. When he was entering Argatha through the tunnels, when he emerged, he thought that the secret of immortality, according to ancient Greek writings, his priests were called cloud walkers. This cave is a very near the peak of Kogian Mountain, meaning the head of the Magnificent, which is a rock formation that's now called the Romanian Sphinx. This disc is in the painting that is part of the remains of a sacred temple in the capital of Deke called Sarmirzla Regia and is located high in the Oresti Mountains. And there's a picture here. It says, you are immortal, make your decisions carefully. But there's a there's a um, Merkaba that he's looking up to. It's an older man. And it's funny because my dad saw the Merkaba the first time that we did Muniki rites. I gave them to him inside of a um, teepee. And when he came back, he was like, he, he was like, I saw this like thing. It was all these uh, pyramids. It you are not abandoned is this one from 1984. And it says, allies are near. They may not be in the shape and form that you expect. The main thing is to not let the demons of your mind have power and convince you that you are not of value. Emotional trauma can be reversed. In the Bedouin society, a horse might be considered as a member of the family. They may even drink water from the same cup and share their tent. This extends the perception of family creating an all-exclusive tribe consciousness that is common to many ethnic groups. This is the sense of connectedness. No one feels abandoned. They have the support of the tribe, and our society does not reflect this today, but there is a movement to create community as the best means of sustaining life and human survival during these changing times. So try to connect the animals, the people, you know, be part of your community, create a community. Don't be the victim. Watch out for empty enchantment and false promises made in the heat of the moment. Love should not require sacrifice. Responsible choice can prevent tragedy. Rasuka was a famous Czech opera composed by Dvorka, the old folktale. The Rasalki are the Slavic water sprites living in the rivers and lakes. There are many interpretations of what those sprites are. Like in the wills of the ballet Gazelle, they are said to be young girls who die of a broken heart after being betrayed by their lovers. The Rasalki come out of the water and they sing with the alluring voices and dance in the moonlight. And in this story, a prince hears Rasoka sing and falls in love with her. She too is seduced by the thought of living upon 
the land as a human so she may embrace him she trades her voice with the witch jezebel who tells rosuka that if she can become human she will lose the power of speech and if she is betrayed by the prince both will be eternally damned she drinks the potion and the prince comes and takes her back to the castle and soon betrays her her father um, the water goblin king reclaims Rusuka and brings her back to the lake. The prince soon realizes his folly and dives into the lake after her to his death. This story is, um, inspired the Hans Christian Andersen to write The Little Mermaid. Like when I had said recently, I'm like, I, I, you know, what am I going to let my feet fall off of my body or am I going to walk away before that happens? You know, we have the choice to do sacrifice our voice and our, our, our strength and our words and our ability to create and be who we are meant to be, or we can allow the victimhood of, you know, the things that others do or how we feel at the results of the actions of others, you know, destroy our world. And this is the goddess Isis, nothing really dies, it just changes form. The lap of Isis is the royal throne. From her breast flowed the milk that she gave to the divine right to rule. It is why she's often depicted suckling Horus upon the throne, just as Mary and the Christ child were centuries later. She was a creation goddess who knew the secrets of life and death, and the uninitiated might call it magic from a lack of understanding of the principles involved. This knowledge is deeper and is part of the ancient Egyptian mystery schools. The resurrection of Osiris is also... A also mirrors the Christian story. Neither really died, but they went on another form, and to the left of Orion's belt is the star of Isis. This star was called Soptet in ancient Egypt, and it is a presently called Sirius. Many temples of Isis are oriented toward the rising of Soptet or Sirius. So, you know, again, she she comes down through the energy, through the frequency, into things still. And the sacred lineage, divine union, you are made of stardust. A access the DNA connections to your soul family. They are waiting for you to interact with you. Our DNA is a, like a biological internet. Scientists are finding evidence of alien signals and codes spliced into it. The man and woman in the painting represented this. Each have a lock of their hair wrapped around the other, forming the design of a DNA strand. They also represent the Eros Gamos, or the sacred marriage, when sex becomes a conscious ritual of love and divine union between God and Goddess, or the two human beings. The unification of two inner spirits, opposite in polarity, harmonizing them into a divine or third quality of expression. This is the alchemy of love in an inner balance that can be achieved and experienced. It's a, called Sacred Lineage 2011 in the card number 44. <laughs> and they have a cloud as a, um, as a ship, like a, like a uh, what do you call it? Like a shift, sh the shape-shifting cloud things that we get. Gratitude, honor the sacred in everything, the corn goddess. Identify with the person, person, personify the corn goddess. She represents the balance of nature and the young girl, the giver of life, and the wise woman. I met the wolf people in Mexico and I called uh, the Hangchi of Rochakchiti. They believe that they come from the wolf shamans originating from the dog star Sirius. Holy fuck. Having had dog wolf, wolf dogs all of my life, I could relate to this thought. Wolves are so psychic and attuned to the nature, just like this tribe living in the Sierra Madre Mountains. The corn goddess is the most important deity of their matriarchal society since she sustains the tribe through their life cycles. She is honored and celebrated in elaborate rituals that include both the men and women in the painting. She wears the feather deer antlers in the sacred cloak of parrot feathers while the Mexican red wolf looks down from the stars. The sacred copal incense wafts up to honor them communion with the divine inspires the colorful bee jewelry the sculpture the embroidery and the yarn painting art and creation is the bridge between the spiritual and mundane worlds oh my god believe in spontaneous healing the healing of avalon Stop sending the old programs to yourselves they are listening. Breaking those negative habits and replacing them with positive affirmations is not enough. You must believe them. This has now been scientifically proven. It is truth that must be internalized to be healthy. Glatzenberry, England, known as Avalon, is the heart chakra of the earth. The heart contains neurons, and it has a brain and its own kind of intuitive intelligence. In the painting, the healer has the caduceus symbol over his heart while she shares the crystal grail cup of the healing water of Avalon with his with her with his beloved the white horse representing spirits watching 
Um, as the blue rose of immortality blooms, love turns on the codons in our DNA, and it is the language of the heart talking to the brain. It creates a state of harmony and bliss in the cells that is a catalyst to good health and spontaneous healing. Jesus Christ, man. It's rise to the occasion. You may have to take a leap in your consciousness to prepare for the coming special initiations and challenges. Preparation is necessary and cannot be avoided. Stepping up your energies is the best way to perceive, benefit, and utilize these experience. Under the Romanian Sphinx are secret chambers and holographic records of tunnels leading to different areas of the inner and outer earth. And in this book about Transylvania, um, an author, Radu, traveled through the tunnel to Tibet. And in a cave in the Himalayas, he recounts a meeting with the goddess Ma Shandi. Her grace and her power overwhelmed and enlightened. While her blue skin and radiance left him awestruck her eyes were like flames seeking out and illuminating every corner of his body his soul leaving nothing unread my own experience of romania in the dakian sanctuary um mountains of the sphinx was profound healing and illuminating and it's page 111 the other day the conversation that i was having with that person where i was talking about the the thing with sarah and uh bridget and all of that she, we ended up talking about blue people too because there are blue people from sirius and there's blue people depicted in ancient egypt and there's blue people <clears throat> obviously in other cultures talked about too the fact that it's there and it's across the, it's like people don't just make shit up and and put it into things and then like make the same shit up other places unless it's really there to be made up from the you are the oracle card and it says the lady of avalon has been the spirit of a place ever since the humans walked on the surface sea dragons and land dragons once swam and crawled upon the summer set levels pleosaurs and ithlosaurs were found in the vicinity of glatzenberry they were the avalonian and camelotia by scientists where these creatures were the inspiration for Pendrag Pendragon or Hill Dragon. They sleep in her memories and are a part of the goddess and her mysteries. She sits on the lion throne where she can envisage the past, present, and future. She embodies the land in her heart center energy. The portal in the sky opens to the Pleiades and to the star brethren that she perceives and knows. Choose a natural solution when possible, the Codex of Ermid. In the abundance of nature can be found the plants with healing qualities for almost all ailments. Tune into Aramid and do your homework before deciding which is the most best decision for your health. In the Tuatha de um uh, they are said to have arrived the ships inside clouds landing on the mountaintops of Ireland. In the patents, in the response of the onslaught of GMOs in the EU's Codex Elementarius, Aramid, the goddess of medicinal plants, was the daughter of Dientas, the chief healer, the physician of the Tuath Danan. She and her brother Mayak had healing skills and plant knowledge that eclipsed their father, causing him to murder Mayak in a jealous rage. And when Aramid visited her brother's grave, she saw that there were 365 herbs growing there in the sh shape of his body. Each herb was a cure. Uh, for a particular organ joint or muscle and the plants began to speak to Aramid, teaching her the full spectrum of their healing powers she arranged the herbs on her cloak and in a human shape to record their use her jealous father came along and shook her cloak scattering the plants into the four winds in the herb lore of the relearned over generations as Aramid whispered her wisdom to us so it was not lost to the human race and beneath the paps of anu in the country cur she decrees the right of gaia's children to gather grow and use nature's gift of medicinal plants sarah La Kali is a symbol of love that endures, the love that never dies. There are three main legends that surround Saint Sarah. The first is known as the charitable noble woman who collected almas for the poor in the Saints Maries de la Mer in the south of France in the beginning of the first century. She had a vision that the female saints who were present at Jesus' death would arrive on the shores. And when they did, around the year 42, St. Sarah was the first to lovingly welcome them with open arms. The golden legend of the 13th century says that St. Sarah arrived with the three Marys, Mary Magdalene, Mother Mary, and the Mary of Bethany, as one of their slaves. She was said to be an Egyptian, very beautiful, and endowed with the healing powers. The third legend says that St. Sarah is the daughter of Mary and Jesus, um, during the persecution of the early Christians 
it is believed that Sarah Magdalene fled with the young Sarah, Jesus' mother, um, and Mary of Bethany to the south of France. There she raised Sarah and continued her ministry of love, of becoming what Christ referred to as true human beings, meaning both fully human and fully divine. Saint Sarah is known as the Queen of the Outsiders because she is the beloved patron saint of the Romany people. <clears throat> she is carried from her crypt in the cathedral to the sea on horseback every May 24th um, <clears throat> by thousands of Romany who gather annually to celebrate her. There is an ancient chest in St. Sarah's Cathedral that contains the relics of the three Marys. St. Sarah, re Sarah represents the spiritual tenets of the Camarag's cross, the faith and hope, but above all, love. And no matter who you are or where you are, St. Sarah's love is the kind that reaches you. There's nothing you need to perfect or prove. There's nothing that you need to wait or become. There's only the deep abiding truth that love is not outside of you. You are never an outsider to love. You are love. Saint Sarah is the ultimate love card, the one that whispers what you've always known, that love is our true purpose and our only true home. Love is where we will arrive, no matter how persecuted or how lonely or how outcast we may feel. No matter how long it has been since we have felt love, St. Sarah is the healing that comes when we embody love again. She is here to welcome us back to the singular destination that we've actually never left. Home is the only ever as far as we allow ourselves to be separate from the space of our own heart. Soul, source, soul voice meditation, enter the heart and ask to experience love, true love, and let it fill you head to soul. In the intention, I have arrived, and I am where I will always be, in love. Layla embodies the potency and the power of our words to create our own reality. The mystic or the poet who lived in the 14th century was married at the age of 12 but was extremely unhappy as a wife. She left her home at the age of 24 um, and she became a Shaivite, a devotee of Shiva. Layla walked in the streets naked, dancing and reciting her love of poems to the divine. She wore only the markings of her devotion to Shiva on her forehead. She was a creator of mystical form of poetry called the Vax, which means speech or voice. The verses of poetry that she spoke are considered the earliest compositions in the Kashmiri language. Her words reflect the spiritual truth of non-duality that she realized as a mystic above temple and below idol are one and with her poetry she found the unity in all things in the freedom that follows i layla entered through the door of the garden of my mind and saw shiva and shakti united into one O oh, joy there i became immersed in the lake of nectar and i died even while i was alive what can death do to me now? The Kashmiri language is filled with her sayings. She is known as a prophetess and a saint, even an avatar. Although illiterate, she used the inherent power of every word to transcend duality and enter a state of blissful union with the divine. Words have the power to shift our re reality or to continue to reinforce it. Turn... Uh, Louise Hay turned to me during a dinner party and looked at me in the eye and declared, every word that you say is an affirmation. It's perhaps one of the most crucial spiritual lessons to remember, that if we are not separate from the soul, and if we are the soul, it is not separate from the divine, then we have the power to co-create our life. Layla is the invitation to pay close attention to each word that we say to ourselves within and to the words that we say about ourselves to the people that we love. She is the acknowledgement from the soul that our every sentence is a prayer. And if we want more love, more light, more of that joy and that freedom that expands our capacity to be present in the world, then Layla reminds us that we can become the author of our own reality right now. We can speak our desires into being. 
Layla is the reminder that you are powerful, that changing the words that we use to describe ourselves can change the trajectory of our lives. We can choose to focus on our situation, on each I am statement that we say, and we can infuse our lives with the nectar that comes with when we act in truth, that we are not separate from the divine. Soul voice meditation. What are the most important words for me to use frequently right now? And the intention, every word I say becomes a prayer and I am the author of my own story. The Divine Mother, Saradavi Davi, she embodies the divine power that initiates seekers through the spiritual path through the unconditional love. She was born in India and as a girl she worshipped the clay figure of Kali. She meditated and began to have visions, and at age five she was betrothed to the priest of Dakshini Kali Temple, a beloved mystic named Ramakrishna. Ten years later she joined him at the temple, and they began their lifelong spiritual marriage together. Uh, she performed, and with her this meant that the that was positioned at the seat of the goddess Kali was addressed with Srima and Holy Mother Sarada is considered to be Ramakshri's first disciple. They both became noble mystics with large international fallings. Sarada helped the monastic order of the devotees of Ramakrishna after he passed, and because she was so beloved and the monastic order was founded for women in her honor, she paved the way for the future generations of women to enter the spiritual life. And as a guru, Sarada Devi was known for treating all her disciples as her children. Many of the dev devotees relate that she initiated them in a dream, that she appeared as a goddess as a human form and gave them a mantra. And when they met her for the first time, they would recall the dream and know instantly that they were encountering their guru. Sarada Devi loved all of the disciples unconditionally and equally, and in her teaching she emphasized that there is no such thing as a stranger. She encouraged her devotees to understand that everyone that we meet is actually a part of us, and it is connected to us, and that if we want to experience true peace, we need to own the fault and the judgments that we are projecting onto others, that we need to see our own faults and forgive them with love. And Sarah D. Devi uh, whispers gently to us, No one is a stranger, my child, and this whole world is your own. So if something keeps showing up in the people that we meet and in the relationships that we are cultivating, Sarada asks us to meet them from within us, meaning the aspect of this other person that might be causing us pain or frustration or just plain aversion. These same aspects exist within us. And unless we are willing to really meet with these aspects within us, the universe will keep presenting them to us in the relationships. And it is not to piss us off or to, it is to free us. The earliest mention of Saraswati was in the Rig Veda, a collection of ancient sacred texts that date back to 1500 BCE. She is sometimes referred to as the mother of the Vedas and is understood to be the personification of knowledge. Students appeal to her for assistance on exams and writers and artists pray to her to remove all the obstacles that keep them from being a clear conduit for the creativity that wants them to come through them. She is the considered to be the river goddess and the feminine deity with healing flowing water. She is venerated as the goddess of music, the arts, and learning because of this association with the waters to heal and purify. Her iconography associates with the white lotus symbolizing the purity of wisdom that her energy brings. And when we are aligned with the essence of who we are, then what needs to be communicated through us, whether with words or music or artwork, can flow. And when our creativity feels blocked or stagnant, it isn't because the waters have dried up and it might feel this, but the truth is that self-awareness is the key to unlocking our creative flow. When we take the time to return to the essence of who we truly are and nurture that essence, we realign again with the river of expression on the soul generate. Saraswati remind is the reminder that anything we create that purifies us in the process of making it is a blessing our art should be judged not on the popularity but on the power to transform us saraswati is a call to the return to the essence of our true self the energy of the card brings a charge for more self-knowledge more awareness of our own unique soul of what our needs are in the moment 
She leads us back to the finely attuned space where we can express with ease and grace what the soul desires most to share. And the energy feels like a river moving through us and it heals and it liberates and it inspires others to return to their own essence as well.